The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman sitting here for Larry Pesavento. I spoke to him this morning on my show. He called in. He uh, still sounds kind of scratchy, but he's really improved a lot. He should be back on Monday. Brian Breezy. Let's just go straight to the market. Dow's up 258 at 33,374. Uh, 33, Let me. I, I'm not going to cover that right now. I want to go straight to live. Uh, we're looking at... Um, a pattern that, so in the Chapman Wave methodology, I'll do this real quickly for those who are new to my work. Try to identify using other techniques. We use a bunch of techniques to try to identify a low bar. From that, you count each successively higher peak, alphabetized, uppercase on the way up, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. But it is never an H. But at D, other things can happen. It can go to an E, F, but D is where you start to look for some kind of turnaround. You can see in the big picture right here, see that E. Um, and if you're looking at the chart that I was following early this morning at about uh, 6, 7 o'clock, we had a beautiful, uh, there's a pattern that I um, ascribe to, and it's uh, where the price goes up, 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 then it starts to stall, and it makes lower highs, and much lower lows that all of a sudden it turns around and makes like a V or a cup shape formation, takes out the left side high. That's usually very positive. This is the pattern that I'm looking at right here, if I can just see it. So this is the pattern. Uh, you go up, 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 then you start to pull back. And if you take out that declining low, you can go, I call it a one-to-one, -one, it's called Chapman Wave Parallel One-to-One -one Extension Cup Pattern. And the reason why I call it Chapman Wave because it's under the auspices and under the umbrella of all the, the myriad techniques that I've developed over the decades. Now, if you're looking at this, we did that beautifully, and we did a beautiful one-to-one -one parallel extension. Look, it took it out. So this is the E-mini 10-minute chart at about... Um, Two o'clock this morning, I was up. It had this big move up to about four o'clock this morning, Eastern time. Peak C, A. Here's your starting point, A. Nine period moving average closes up. It goes green, it goes B. C pulls back. There's your falling X. Breaks out. And what does it do without even turning pink? It stays green. It goes all the way to a D. And right here, when it gets to the D, I, I don't know if I should. I'll do this. Why not? Um, let me go all the way to the left. So at that particular point, I'm looking at this one-minute chart, and it gives you a peak E, and it goes narrowly to the, I call this a narrow rectangle formation. Right here, I can go to the narrow rectangle formation. I have, I have, I have webinars on these particular uh, patterns. You can see them. Uh, and am I, am I not going to find it right now? There it is. So the long, narrow rectangle, there's a whole bunch of rules that go with it. Basically, it can last a lot longer than your patience as you think it's going to break to the upside, and then it stops, stalls, turns around, goes to the downside. You think it's going to break to the down. Oh, it holds, and then it just wiggles and wiggles and wiggles and wiggles and waggles all the way through until I have a rule that if it goes above it and then comes down and breaks the midpoint, there's a good chance it's going to take out the left side low. But in this particular instance, look what happened. It went up, 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 and then it stalled, and then it went slightly underneath the, the, the lows that were being made. A uh, really nice time with 4304 to, to look look at, a, at a, a crossover, negative crossover in the nine period moving average from the one minute chart. And of course, uh, it went from 41, I think it was 41, 4305.50 down to the low this morning of 42, 42.25. Anyway, so I like to draw these arch formations. Oh, I never even had time to do this because I think I was, yeah, arch formation from that side, left side low to this side. Now, the reason why I'm showing these, these, <clears throat> these moves where you try to find a plumb line, a midpoint that says the number of bars up could equal the number of bars down or vice versa is because look what happened in the Dow. 
Now, this is where I show my subscribers to my opening call every day. Look at this. And that's why today is really important for a number of reasons. Look at the low of May the 3rd, uh, sorry, March the, th oops, that was March the 15th, and it ran all the way up in a beautiful cup formation, and the plumb line right there just missed being hit at a peak D. Remember peak D is where other things can happen. There's your peak D on the 14th of February at 34,331. Comes tumbling down to a trough D, and then it goes on the way. Trough D, lowercase on the way down, same alphabet alphabetization, except lowercase. It goes to a D and then stalls, and then it pulls back and has what we call a rogue wave as it suddenly spikes to 34,257, May the 1st, and then comes down to a low of the 23rd of May, 32,586. And then look, if you had to count the number, I'm not going to do it, the number of bars on the left side to the exact August the 1st high of 35,679, uh, the day we actually went short, uh, right at the opening, um, and we remain short, even though we've got a very aggressive three times long, but just a small trading position, but it is three times long in, in the uh, UDOW, which has held its stop and it's doing quite nicely. Look, this the number of bars to the downside, this is called the Chapman Wave Inside Wedge Target Support Line. On the way up, it's called the Target Resistance Line. So, And what did it do? It said, using this plumb line, the midpoint is called bar symmetry from the low of the 23rd of May to the high of August the 1st to what I notated here with the X as October the 6th. That's the exact number of bars. What happens here is really imperative to monitor because we've gone to a leg E. It's not a trough yet because you have to wait for another bar that has a higher high, uh, sorry, a higher low so that you can actually make that little V-shape at the bottom called a trough. But we went to, instead of Look, 31,805 was, the, was the, um, the low after the 31,429 low of May the 15th. So about seven bars later, it goes up and then pulls back, peak B pulls back, and has a Chapman Wave Roman candle. It has a very nice move. Remember, I discussed this. My subscribers will remember that. Well, 31,805 to 31,429 is that low over there. But in this particular case, we've got the same sequence. You've got a big move up, and then it pulls back and holds nicely. So 32,586 to the low of 32,704 on the 1st of June. That was a little containment area. So I said there's a good chance using this particular methodology, and we've seen it in many in one minute charts, one monthly charts. It's amazing. I'll show you uh, the bonds in a moment. Look, we went, today's low is 33, uh, 32,846. So we're right in that area. So what happens here is really important. But from my eye, for the visual part of it, tells me that we are still, this is not the low. This is just a low, and it's really important to keep that in mind. Let's see if we've got our leg D in the 10-minute chart that we've been looking for, uh, for people in the den. We're waiting for leg D to start above 40, uh, above 43.39.50. We're at 43.36 right now in the cup formation. I'll be right back. Basil Chapman sitting for, for Larry Pesavento. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters Letters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? 
Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. A little Mozart there, but as we go into this uh, segment here, let, let me just cover this quickly. The um, If this had to fail right here, I'd be able to call this a peak C1, peak C2. But the strength of this 10-minute chart with the nine-period exponential moving average, even though you've really had a side, was it, this rectangle formation is really like a ball. I'd done a time lapse in my work. It took me to about this point right here at about uh, 13.10. That's 1.10 this afternoon, uh, Eastern time. And now we've extended by about six or seven bars to, to that level. So, yeah, that's a miss. Uh, but uh, the cup, the bowl formation is really the most imperative thing to be monitoring right now within a rectangle. It says there's a chance that we can go a little higher, maybe one pop, and then basically as a rectangle formation, 4320 is the next level of support you've got to be watching if there is a sudden turn down. But this is in waves, and I'll, I'll discuss the waves in a moment. But I, let me just do a couple of things here. One is that if this goes one penny, in this case because it's the futures, one quarter point above the high of, 43 39.50 that was made at that PC. That starts leg D and it remains a floating letter. This is a floating letter C until it makes a peak by having a lower high. That becomes a peak C. All right, just wanted to get that down. I mean, the technique is, believe me, I'm not going to make anything very complicated. I, I don't like that. But there are times where you have to have a subplot. In other words, you can have your core. But then you have to have alternate. If you don't have an alternate viewpoint, um, you're not looking at this thing objectively. You're looking at it subjectively. So I tried to do that, and I said, what if I'm wrong? <clears throat> All right, so within that context, there are a couple of things that we need to look at. So I, I just want to get to some of the questions here. They're very important questions. Uh, a while back, I had a question here. Um, uh, so Basil, we loaded half the boat with the IWM. So that's the IWM is the Russell Small Caps. So you did that yesterday. So you're in a very nice position, um, uh, baseball eyeballs in the in the YouTube. Um, that that was brave, I must tell you, because it was the weakest index. And if we were going to fail, <laughs> you'd be in the failing weakest index. So so far, I'm saying that's good. I personally wouldn't have wanted to load the boat in the weakest. I would have wanted to load the boat in in the strongest. But at the same time, take it a position in this. So you've got a little upside to the way I'd be looking at, but I'm not you. 
you probably have done these things very successfully before. So I'm just saying to you that uh, there's nothing wrong with that, except I would have split stops. I'd have a, a fairly tight stop on one position. I'd have um, a more moderate one on the other. And then today's low, one six, if it takes out today's low by Monday or Tuesday, that's really not good. So that's all I'm looking at. But in terms of the takeoff, yes, it's a gray leg A, and I'll move this A over here. It should be gray because I haven't got any technical indicators to say this even at a buy signal. But yes, it did go down to a trough D. That's good. All right, next thing is the dollar. So the question came in, the dollar. What? what for, three questions came in. Uh, one is... Um, Basil, what does the dollar need to do for this market to be sustained to the upside? That's number one. I'll answer that one. It doesn't have to do very much. It doesn't have to break down. It just it should not go into the 108. It's the 107. You know, 10730 was about the high four sessions ago. We've been long the dollar. Actually, we've been long the dollar since 2018. Have it as a core position, taking nice profits on the way up and down, all sorts of things. But I'm keeping this dollar. I think the dollar um, is going to be a, a an icon, a visual icon of our economy. So I'm keeping it here because it's still one of the best economies around the world, and therefore the dollar should remain its premier currency at the moment. I can change that. And then the qu second question was, um, what what would it take for the dollar to, uh, on a weekly basis, to become very negative? Well, this is the irony of the whole thing. In the Chamberlain methodology, because of this rectangle formation right here, See this U-shaped formation with another U, it's like a W. It actually looks like other things as well. But in the meantime, what I am looking at is this has just started a buy mode, an upgrade buy signal to a buy mode. The stochastic at 94 is fabulous. The MACD is good. The 9 period over the 14 period moving average, excellent. But the price went under the rectangle low, and now it's above the rectangle low. And I've said that I want two out of three weeks, a closing price, two three out of three consecutive weeks, above 105.80, 105 the high that was made earlier on for that first H that went to a lowercase m, lowercase h to a lowercase m. And now we've got the cup formation. So I love everything about it. But if you look at the stochastic and the MACD, and if I said to you, uh, the dollar hit the 200, I mean, look at this, 200 period moving average. Is that unbelievable support right there? When it was there, did you have to care? And there's your beautiful arch formation with the plumb line and it came down and took it out. So look at this. This is a very important moment for the dollar. The reason why I'm taking just a moment for the dollar is that it is part of the problem. All right? It isn't the problem. It is just part of the problem. So to get this... To, to get it unwound from a buy mode back to maybe just a buy signal, maybe even having to change it to a sell signal on the weekly chart, you'd have to see a close way below the 14 period moving average, which is at about 104 right now. I, a lot has to happen. So I'm not even going to talk about that other than to say this is a this is very good action in the dollar. But it's not that. I mean, really, if you're looking at the dollar, this is just a rebound. It's not anything more than that. If you look at gold, and I have to go to gold because they, 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 the, not the trajectories, but the, the, the angle, not even the degree. But when one is going up, very often the other is going down. They, they move not in mirror image, but in counterpoint, like a Bach counterpoint where the one melody goes one way, the other melody goes the other way. So if you're looking at gold, look at this. This is the weekly chart of gold. Gold has done almost, look, it's done a one-to-one -to, -one to the downside. There's your dreaded H. There's your falling X formation, the one that I was talking about earlier. And it went under the 200 period moving average. Gold has a lot of work to do to get back even to the 200 period moving average of one, 1903, of 1903, and it's at 1844. It's... I have to respect the fact that gold has held beautifully considering what the dollar has done, but not when you put the dollar into the context, the bigger context of weekly and monthly charts. So this says to me, gold is part of the problem. What is the real problem? Here's the real problem. Bonds, the TLT is still down 64 cents a day at 85.19. Um, look at this. The nine, this is the weekly chart. The nine period moving average, ugly, underneath the 14. The MACD, ugly. Um, that's, look at the histogram of the MACD. The, the, um, 
stochastics at 8%, it could still go down to 3 or 4%, but it is ugly. But what tells me that we're very close to at least an attempt to bounce, which is one of the reasons we went into, for the first time, and I can't even remember when the last time was, we went into a financial stock today. Interesting, huh? Okay, so this is the TLT, and Larry did when he called in, he said he's thinking that bonds are getting really close to at least a, a pretty decent bounce. And I can just tell you this, that on the daily chart, the low today is 84.06, and we just changed. Oh, time flies when you're having fun, huh? Oh, did we make our legs leg D in the 10-minute uh, chart, which is the obligation of the Chapman Wave methodology, buy signal to buy mode? And we, we're in leg D in the 10-minute chart. There it is. And the 9 is still way over the 14. Nice work, if you can get it. I'll be back in a moment. Does it? The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Hi, folks. Basil Chapman, singing for Larry Pesavento's Oh, wow, we've got a lot of questions. So just let me just say, uh, La Lama in, uh, Lama Mama in the YouTube Hello, Larry. No, this is not Larry. This is Basil Chapman sitting in for Larry Pesavento. And thank you for the heart. I'll pass it on to, to Larry. Um, so a question came in about uh, XLE. So uh, I'm going to go there right now. XLE. <clears throat> Here we go. XLE, this is the energy. Is the energy going to make a V-shaped pattern? 
in other words, what I call the Eiffel Tower is going to go to the upside. It's really a v no. I think that the um, energy sector is going to take a digestive phase. Yes, it's right on the 200 period moving average in the daily chart. It made a peak D in the uh, weekly chart. And the monthly chart says just kind of stuck in a range. I don't think it's in a breakdown. I think oil is still kind of important. But oh, and I, don't, I, I, I should I, I've done this in my show. Um, the crude oil. Let me just show you something about the crude oil. The crude oil in my work says that if I have, it's a complicated thing. It's called the Chapman Wave, unconventional flat-based restart. It explains everything if you understand what a restart is. Um, when it, you get a peak D and then an instant restart within two bars or three bars with a new leg E, and then it and suddenly turns around sharply, and then takes out that the trough of D. Then you've got to be and key still goes higher. That's like a magnet. It's going to bring the price down. And I would say to you in a couple of weeks uh, time, the 77 to 76 area is what I would be considering um, some kind of big retest for for crude oil. All right, let's get out of that. So the question is now, I think XLE, there'll be some participants, but I'm I, I think it's going to. This is going to, if this rally continues into Tuesday, Wednesday, and I, from the way it came off the bottom, I think it is, um, then I think we're going to be looking at new leadership. And that, that's the reason why I said to subscribers, we want this particular index. And I'd say to them, um, we want it here, preferably under a certain price, but the preferably was only just, uh, if you want to have a little patience, well, you either got it in exactly the level we wanted it, or within a couple of pennies, and then it ran up, and now it's holding quite nicely. It did come back and retest. So the reason I got that was because it, it embraces a couple of areas in tech, tech that I think are showing today that they are desperate to try at least to rally, to try to get back upside because they've had such big smashes to the downside. So if we might, in this instance, start to skip the oil sector, and rig was a question. Rig here. Let me just do rig. See, rig is pulled back. Really, it's not rig and mortis, but it's Transocean Limited. I would say that it's done the one to one to the downside in the, at a double top in the uh, weekly chart. And it's just there's a Chapman Wave Roman candle. I'll talk about that on Monday. I'm not going to talk about it now. But um, this this just says to me, rig is digesting huge gains. This is offshore drilling and oil and gas, and you can go through Exxon and all of them. I think we're looking at a possible nice lift off today, but Going into next week, we might find that we've got, let's look at the SMHs. The SMHs, very nice leg, B to the upside. Now, we are short from the two points off the all-time high, uh, a day and a half off the uh, all-time high. And we had SOXS three times long, uh, sorry, three times short. We did. We had lovely trades. We're out of that. We haven't done anything with it. I even took it off my list today because I don't want to be bothered with it right now. I think that I almost wanted to get the SOXL, which is three times long, as a trade. I think we're still going to have to do retesting. But instead, I got something that is generic to everybody. If, if any of these in different sectors, this would include the XLK, which is the, whoops, not BXL, this is XLK. Here we go. And this is just one, it's not even one day, it's just a couple of hours off the low. So we can't act as if everything, oh, everything's hunky-dory or everything's, we've made a major turn and this is it. No, no, this is a process. Remember, it has to be considered a process. Although when you move almost 600 points in the Dow off the low, um, that is really impressive. In the meantime, uppercase on the way up. This is leg B. I call it a gray leg B because the stochastic's only at 40%. It's not at 80%. So this is very nice for the XLK. And look how the nine period didn't go negative in the weekly chart. That's a good sign. So what I've got now for subscribers embraces the, 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 all these areas in tech. All right. The other thing I'm looking at now was a question came in. Let me just go through. Oh, I wrote them all down. Okay. Google, I'm not going to G-O-O-G-L, which is the trading vehicle. I'm going to the just Goog the way I've always typed in Goog. And I would love to call it Google and not alpha, but just even today, it sounds so strange. Fabulous move. I love Google. That's another reason why we got the, the instrument we got, because it includes stocks like Google. So this is making the V-shaped recovery. If I had to draw this in, here's my technique. Plumb line right there. Right there. Whoops, I have to move it over. Plumb line right there. 
Now you can see it's impossible. Uh, well, I don't know if it's impossible. Look here, one, two, three, four, five, six sessions down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We're on the eighth. So this is not your plumb line. It has to be moved over. So I now move it over based on a couple of other factors. And it's usually candles, and I don't actually see any candle. So I'm just arbitrarily moving it over just on a visual basis. In other words, it's not a mathematical formula. And I'm doing this, and I'm saying by Tuesday of this coming week, maybe Wednesday, Tuesday or Wednesday of this coming week, we should see Google by the, that's even too far. It really is, it's just one bar off the low. I'm going to go there. So we go there. Okay, it just says to me that by the 10th, when is the 10th? 10th of October is Tuesday. Yeah, by Tuesday or Wednesday, there's a really good chance that we're going to test the left side high of the 18th of September of 139.93. We're at 138.58. It's in a cup formation. It's actually more like a beautiful V-shaped formation. I prefer always to draw the cupping because it's just visually easier to see than the straight lines. <clears throat> and the weekly chart, look at this very quick. Peak G slash C, I'll turn account, D slash E, and then it went to a slightly higher high. That's E slash M, and this could be G slash C. This is really positive. So Google I've liked for a long time. It's really acting well. Good. I'm pleased you added to it. Next question came in. Um, and the key support now is at 136. Just a uh, next question came in. Oh, XLU. The XLU. Now, this is a tough one because you're trying to pick the bottom of a cascade, a waterfall cascade to the bottom. And we don't know if this is the low. I'm going to suggest to you the XLU, the SB Select Utility Spider Fund, uh, which is. We had four sessions of just trying to uh, deal with 54, 55 as, as, as a base of support. It could bounce. I don't think this is the low. I do think, and if you look at the TBT, let's just go to uh, the, uh, let's just go to the ultra short Lehman 20 at Treasury bond ETF. So this is basically the yield in leg E, hit 4331 today. 4.331 percent, and now it's putting. But right here, the MACD is good. Stochastic's flat at 80, uh, 88 percent. On balance volume is a little bit overbought. This could pull back, but it's the speed of everything that occurs from now on. So if the utilities, uh, so if the TBT, because the TLT is running, I'll talk, I won't rush. There's plenty of time. I'll be back. Dow's up uh, 313. That's what Chapman's sitting in for a Larry event, a difficult task to do, but I'll be, I'll You I'll might do think it. that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. 
Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. So this is live, so let me show you live. So we've made a peak E in the one minute chart. I can go to the five minute and all sorts of things. I'm just going one minute and 10. That's like going from the daily to the monthly instead of daily, weekly, monthly. Doesn't matter. If this high that was just made in the 10 minute E mini <clears throat> at 43.45.50, if we don't touch it, if we touch it one more time in this, move, this bar right now, that'll continue leg D. If there's a lower high by 25 cents, that says to me that we've started a peak D and it's from this moment on. Now, I, I, what's the time? Yep, I've got time. So I like to look at the market in phases. This is early phase for us here in the Northeast. That's the phase that most of us are sleeping uh, other than market players like, like a Larry who's up most of the night, half the time doing these incredible trades. But I, I'm looking at it as if this is where sleepy time is. So you've got a whole bunch of plays. You've got overseas plays. You've got other, other players. But then comes at 6 o'clock or 6.30 to the 8.30 economic report going into the 10.20 time frame. So you've got at least another two phases of the day. Sometimes completely different players. There are players that Oh, they're in and they're out. I used to know someone who did all the in fact all these all this notation, the green bar over the uh, the the green bar over the black bar, turning green and then turning pink. Um, late Herb Brun, wonderful technician that I had known for oh, decades, did a lot of this work for me. Um, and uh, you know, so he used to trade. He'd be done. In, I mean, not even a split second. He'd have his, I, I could show you some things that he had. You wouldn't, you'd see so many dots. You, you wouldn't even know what you're looking at. He wouldn't know what he's looking at because he was at MIT back when the computer was being developed back in the 50s. But um, he would be in and out of trade in lightning. And all he wanted to do, like if he was overseas or whatever, he wanted, to, he wanted whatever it is to pay for whatever he was doing. It was amazing, right? All right. So now you see this peak E here on the one minute chart, how it's turning down. You see how it's turned pink. See the MACD is very weak. See the stochastic, this is the green red lines down. See this relative strength in the one minute chart. See the on balance volume turning down. Well, look at this. You're about to get a peak D with a doji candle, small little indecisive doji candle. Look at the doji candle at peak C. I'm watching this because now we've got between now, what's the time? I'm not used to this. So this is, uh, what time is this now? One uh, something or other. Oh, I'm covering it, so I can't really see. Uh, one, one whatever it is, 1.45. Is it? No, really? 1.45? Yeah, 1.45. Now you've got the different players. Now you've got the, the, the speed with which we turned around. Look at this this morning. Look, the speed with which we turned around after everything looked just terrible and I was saying while I was on the air in my 10 o'clock show I said this is this is not bad we should be five six hundred points down in the Dow we for I couldn't believe that we've got three times long for a trading position 
besides the short that we still have and the longs that we have from October of last year and the diamond low from March, the day of the low of March uh, um, 2020. Um, this is a trading thing. And for three days, it's held. How, how on earth could it do that under these conditions? The day is young. Anything can still happen. But my suspicion is that the speed with which we turned around right there with that doji candle low at 9 o'clock this morning, and then with a very good successful retest of the H pattern without even going to the low, this this move up here was so quick and so persistent. And look, a 10-minute chart in the E-mini had just one bar, 25 cents or something, uh, made a peak, a lower, lower high, and then it was on its way again. That now we've got a new bunch of players. Do we get in? Do we get out? Is this going to... In my experience over decades and watching turnarounds, I mean, every kind of turnaround, March the 9th, March the 6th of 20, oh, 2009, we got the exact day of the low. That was a Friday. But the real low came in on Monday with the S&P. But we got the diamonds. So I'm always a little suspicious of lows that occur on a Friday. I prefer Monday where the news over the weekend was just horrible, horrible. And then everyone gives up the ghost and then Monday... It's just a horrible day. And then all the cameras at Wall Street and everywhere ready to film this horrible day and everybody going broke. And the sun shines and the, uh, the it's a beautiful up day in the end. And they go home with the, you know, just what, what, what happened? Well, did not get sent out to get the big crash? So this is a Friday. So I am saying I love the action, but I don't think we are done. This is not the low, it's a low. All right, enough with that prattling away. Let's just get back to the questions. So the question came in here. Um, we had someone talking about Newmont Mining a few days ago and said, I, I am getting into Newmont. And I said, yeah, it's not one of the, it, it, it's acting okay, but you really need to see a couple of things happening. So Newmont Mining, look at this move from under 34 to 37.79. That is the kind of thing you want to see on a takeoff. So now let's look at the GDX. GDX that's the gold miners. And I've been saying gold miners the last two days were acting better, three days were acting better than gold itself. So this is really important. I don't think this is the big move up for gold, but I do think this could be a really nice bounce. I'm treating it only as a bounce. Look at how the Chapman Wave inside track, you see the green and pink lines, inside track propellant zone. It'll have, by the end of the day, it'll have a small, not a big Chapman Wave Roman candle, but it'll have a little tiny one. If at any point next week it's able to touch 2780, it's at 2698, 2780, just touch it and then push above it and close above it, that'll say to me, this now has legs, at least in the shorter term. I'm not yet going to intermediate term. And the reason being that the dollar now got to do some other things at the same time. The dollar's given back is down at, at 106.11 down 24 cents at a peak E with a doji candle. Now, I haven't gone into any sell signal or anything. We're still long. I, I, uh, we might take a tad off. We did that the other day. I believe it was a peak D. But at this particular point, look at the EUR USD. This is the euro dollar currency pair. Look at this move down in the weekly chart. Look at that straight down move. This is like a midpoint. So you got your one to one to the downside, peak C in the monthly chart. Nice move, nice reversal, but if you're looking at the technicals, there's a lot of work that needs to be done. That 1.07 uh, level of the 200 period moving average in the daily chart, it's going to take either it's going to do it in two three days or it's going to take a little while, and that means that over the weekend something happens. On Monday we come in, Sunday night the, the future's up sharply. The, the dollar's already pulling back, and by Monday at 10.30 a.m. in the morning, the dollar has dropped a point and a half. That's kind of what you want to see right now. So let's talk about phases. So you've got the euro turning around quite nicely. I mean, it's not even back to where it was five days ago, so this is a good start. The USD JPY, that's the um, JPY, that is the um, U.S. dollar currency pair. Nice candle, huh? The nine is still over the 14 in the daily. The weekly chart's got a potential doji candle at a leg D. Now, my rule of thumb in this rectangle that becomes a lopsided cup formation, of course, the gravy cup formation, with uh, left side, right side price time match, different 
uh, midpoints, says that, and this leg D going to just under, right on or just above the previous high of October of last year, this is a key moment and we'll see what happens uh, if it starts to pull back. I'll be back in a moment. Dow's up 312. Dow's up chapter 74. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Hi, folks, we're back. Basil Chapman for Live Press Event. We've only got one little segment left, and I still got tons of things that I, I wanted to talk about, uh, a question about. Let me just do this right now. So in the phases that I'm talking about, now you've got something very different. Now you've got the last two hours of trading coming up. And, of course, you've got, uh, you've got Peter Bruno. It should be a wonderful show today because I'm sure he's going to have a lot to discuss in the, under these conditions. So what we're looking at here is people are saying, oh, that's short. There was shorting going on for weeks and weeks and weeks. There are very few actual buyers. So I'd, I'd be hesitant to be looking at the short side. You can step aside, but uh, just be really careful because now you've got, let me, let me put it this way. To really fool everyone, if the, the two things can happen. One is that the market just gives everything back in the last 45 minutes, not everything, but a big chunk back and just confuses the dead outs. Well, everybody's confused already. You know, you, you know confused the confused. No, nah, no. Nah. I think it's the other way around. If the market holds very well, and actually closes near the high. I'm not saying I'm anticipating that it can do. We don't know what's going to happen. But the technicals are so strong in the 10-minute E-mini that I think that we could hold near the high of the day. What do people do on Monday if Monday's up? They've missed 
800 or so points in the Dow, I mean, this is the market. The market loves to do that. So just be careful. We've done all the shorting. Now it's time to be looking. Remember, market is, look at the tide. And for me, the, the tide and the daily chart is now turning from down to a rising tide. The intermediate term weekly chart, I haven't got that turn yet. I need a lot more. So just think of it in terms of what would you do if you missed the move today? And you didn't know what to do. You'd wait for a short. You'd wait for a you know, sell, big selling program so you can get in. And then you'd say, should I really get in? Is this uh, No. The takeoff was this morning. That's why I sent out the uh, update to my subscribers intraday. I, Monday might be too late, but if it gaps up, you're just kind of stuck. So be careful out there. And uh, have a wonderful rest of the day. Have a wonderful weekend. I'm sure Larry will be back Monday. Check out my opening call, my daily newsletter. Stay tuned for Peter. It should be a great show. And, of course, Tom O'Brien wraps it up 3 to 4. It should be a wonderful day. Bye.